One of my best habits in life, or worst, depends on how you look at it, is that as I work on pieces of artwork, I get other ideas. And the new ideas often can replace the old ideas because I like them better. So now I had came to the conclusion that I had to do something a little bit different with this sculpt. Came to this conclusion in the middle of last night. So the new idea that I had, and that I liked a lot better than the last idea, was that he's going to be on roller skates. Old-fashioned roller skates, not, uh, not newfangled roller skates. Okay. Start, as always, with a ball. This is Sculpey Firm, the gray stuff, which I like, which I really like. And we'll roll it out into what hopefully will be a lower lip, but you never know. The trick is to make nice clean bends in this stuff. And that might be just about right. Okay. Likewise, let's see if we can't make an upper lip. Okay, this one just came out of the oven, nice and piping hot. And now we're going to make the shape behind it, the mouth shape behind it. Let's make a sheet, a fine sheet of clay. And let's always, as always, so we make sure we don't have any cracking or nonsense, we'll roll it on out. We'll condition our clay again. Keep conditioning this clay. <clears throat> then we can just take a knife. Go ahead and trim it off. Easily enough. Okay, to make the teeth. <clears throat> teeth are pretty small. We just roll out little lumps of clay, about like that. And we want five of them, because you always want an odd number. So I'll make them different sizes. And then we'll position them in there. They're small, they're hard to see, but you'll see what I'm doing with this momentarily. Making teeth. Press that into place with my handy-dandy handy pressing tool. Definitely like the teeth being a little wacky, a little off-center. This is the way I like them. All right, what does that look like? Am I liking that tooth in there like that? Is there two, are there three two teeth too close together? Does that give it a fun little eccentricity? Are the teeth too big? These are the kinds of questions you can ask all day long. All right, we'll let it go and we'll bake it up, see how it looks. To make the eyes, I rolled out little balls of clay and then I used that green piece of plastic, which is just trash that I collect off the beach and I keep for this exact purpose. Does it work perfect for stamping out the pupils? To make the hands, I began by comping up the size in oil clay. I wanted the hands to be small because I tried actually a bunch of different sizes of hands <laughs> and they didn't work. So, uh, for instance, I tried something like, you know, in this size range, comp, you know, I'm using oil clay, uh, soft oil clay, just to kind of comp these together to see what I wanted. But see, there's quite a bit of difference. and. Um, I just determined that the smaller size seemed to work better. Even this, even those fingers seem to be a little bit big for the hand. So I think we're going to go with a small hand like that, but we're going to make them obviously in a hardenable clay. Like in this case, I'm using uh, Sculpey Firm, which I really like using. It's a uh, great clay, a little hard to condition, but otherwise it's a, it's a good clay, really good to work with. It's nice and strong. So the hands are interesting because of the size issue. I find that uh, one of the most important things in humor is timing. Uh, but in visual humor, one of the most important things is proportion and size and relationships of size. 
And uh, it, it was interesting to me that the, the size of the hand was really crucial to whether or not it worked with the puppet and it was kind of cute and funny and, and, and it worked. If the hands were too big, they just didn't look right. They looked clunky and they looked kind of monstrous and it didn't work. Um, but uh, they had to be small and uh, they had to be exactly the right size. So as I mentioned, I use the oil clay to comp them up and that works out really well because it's fast and it's cheap and uh, it's especially useful for uh, doing really big things that you want to comp and you don't want to condition that much clay or uh, you know you can't use magic sculpt because you can't mix it so for just visualizing stuff in sculpture I find comping in oil clay to be a really effective way to get it done so I just did the hands and I rolled them into little fists all right now, I'm going to have to put more meat on the hands. I'm going to have to smooth in and come in and this and that. But I believe that I'm going to bake these things off just exactly like they are. Because they're not looking bad. And then I'll come in and do the other sides. I'm not, I'm, not like, I'm not hating those views. Those aren't bad. We'll go forward. As much as I dislike mixing media, certain things are just better done. Uh, using different materials. What can I tell you? And this is a great example. What I'm going to do now is make the kite. But I'm not going to make the kite out of clay because I think it's going to be way too fragile and too heavy. It's going to be suspended at the end of a wire. So I don't think it's ideal to make the kite out of clay. So instead what I'm going to do is mix up a little batch of 5-minute epoxy. Get it mixed up. I'm just putting epoxy on it to do a couple of things. One, paper like this, especially cheap toilet paper to rolls, are not archival in any way. They can rot and, and biodegrade and all that good stuff over time. And the major reason they do that is they're ex they're ex when they're exposed to oxygen, um, they can have that problem. So, one thing you can do is bind them up using plastic. So I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'm going to coat both sides of this paper with epoxy. So it is thoroughly wetted out with epoxy. Epoxy is permeating the paper. And I'm going to use this to make the little ties, rag ties, on the tail of the kite. We'll see how that works. Should work pretty good. But now I can't now I can't even set the damn thing down because it's sticky on both sides. First world problems. Alright, this is nice and dry now, nice and hardened up. Let's cut this open. See what we got going on here. I wanted to throw that out. Right, here's our beautiful kite material. Now the question is, is how big do we make the kite? That is a good question. I don't know how big we're gonna make the kite. Previously, I drew a couple of different sizes. So you know what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna cut the bigger of the two sizes. And um, for the re rationale there is that if I cut the bigger of the two sizes, and I decide I don't like the big size, I can cut it down. To the smaller size. Whereas, duh, if I cut the smaller size, then there's no way that I can recut the kite to the bigger size. Can't make it bigger, can only make it smaller. That look like a kite to you? Eh, maybe a little less slope. What do we think? That's kite like. A little less tail, maybe. There, let's see how this cuts to this epoxy. Oh, it cuts like a champ. Now let's trim this off here. Nice. It's got a nice curve to it. Woo! Just exactly the way it would be if it was sailing through the wind. All right. I'm liking it. That's a pretty plastic uh, object, and it's really light. To attach the kite to the string, I just punched a hole in the front and then bent the wire at a hard angle, glued it on, so that the wire becomes the tail and the string, and it's all one unit, so it's really strong. It's not going to come off of there. Now we can make the little ties, the little 
rib, I don't know what you call them, bows? I don't know. What are those things called? The things on the, the balance of the kite, on the tail of the kite. You know what I'm talking about. I'm not even sure how many of these I'm going to want. Fun thing about making things is, if you never, I've never made a kite, sculpted a kite tail before. So, it's just a process of figuring out how the heck to do it. Put a drop on there, like that. Okay, put one down here. I don't want them at the same angle, so that's good. They're kind of stylized. I made some experiments trying to make these out of little ribbons of clay. And that was a noticeable failure. They just looked like little heavy little blobs. They were not cute. So I'm hopeful that this will be cuter. All right, now we need to uh, have the wheels. We have the little skate wheels, and we have the little skates, the little shoes, and we need to attach all that together. And for that purpose, I've got this nice piece of plastic. I have to make two trucks. And it's going to look something like that. This is just one of those parts you're just not going to be able to make successfully out of clay, or at least I couldn't. It's just so much easier sometimes to machine parts out of other materials. And this hard machinable plastic is going to work out just perfect for this job. Alright, I just did a little tiny bit of corner rounding. And then all we're going to do is get the trucks glued onto the bottom of the feet like that. It's a little bit tricky. Now we're not going to need a tremendous amount because there are two flat surfaces mating up. Should just be able to set it on there. And then with a single drop of glue, attach them. Couldn't be easier. That ought to hold those on fierce. Okay, we'll let that set up for a minute and we'll work on the other wheels. Very good. Get it done. Earlier, I had drilled two holes in the base, but they weren't in the right position for the current version of the figure. So to fill them, I used Magic Sculpt. Well, here we are at the end of the fabrication process on this puppet. All we need to do is drill a bunch of holes for the arms and the legs and the neck, and we'll assemble the pieces with the aluminum armature wire. I made a lot of pieces for this project. As you can see, this, this tends to be my approach to making stuff, is just do a lot of experiments and see what works, see what doesn't. I also made a lot of castings, and that's good. So I feel like I've got a good start on being able to make this character in a lot of different, doing different poses and doing different activities and that sort of thing. For this video, these are the parts that are going to go into the finished model. The arms and legs will be made out of 8th inch aluminum armature wire, and that'll take some experimenting to fit, cut and fit all of that. Now, obviously, I haven't assembled these pieces, and I'm not going to in this video. That's a whole other process, and first we need to get the pieces primed and painted, and we'll do that in next week's video. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. See you in the next one.